What's going on today? I got a little fun something this weekend um, that I wanted to do a little crafting with. So I'm going to attempt to uh, mix this in with my project today. Let's see if you can see. So this is little wooden beads with the alphabet on them. Aren't those cute? So I found these in, um, in Michael's and uh, it was in the section where you buy um, supplies to make jewelry. So um, I guess you string them on, um, I don't know, leather or something. I don't know. I don't make jewelry, so <laughs> not typically anyway. Um, but anyway, I just really liked them. Um, something about wood beads. I'm all about wood beads. Um, but these had the little letters on them, so I thought that was kind of fun um, and would be uh, really cool to add to some of my crafts. So I bought a container with a whole bunch of them, and um, I just put them in this jar that I already had. So, did everybody have a Merry Christmas? I had a really good Christmas, feeling pretty blessed. Um, I got to see um, a lot of my family, but I didn't get to see everybody. I do have some family out of town that I didn't get to see. My daughter um, is all the way up in Amarillo, and I'm in Cypress, Houston area. So that's quite um, a distance. And then um, my sister is up in Colorado. And so we have some different family members that um, weren't able to make it for Christmas, and I really, really missed them. Um, but hopefully we can all catch up soon. Um, I hope you were able to spend some time with your family as well. And, um, you know, are getting settled in, ready to, um, get back into your normal groove of things. Even though we got another holiday coming up, we got New Year's on Wednesday. Um, what do you guys do for New Year's? Do you hang out with friends? Do you just sit on the couch with your dog? Do you do fireworks? Um, what do you guys do? We don't always do something, but if we do, we're like, we hang out with friends and do fireworks and have a few drinks or whatever, maybe a bonfire, um, something like that. It's, it's almost always cold and wet on New Year's, um, so it's kind of dreary a little bit, but um, I don't know what we're going to do this year. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. But tell me what you guys are going to do. Maybe you'll have some great ideas for me and um, can help me make some plans um, for my New Year's Eve. So, um, okay, so I told you about the wood beads that we're going to be using. Um, I do have some chalk pastes. Look at those colors. We're going to be using some of these. Um, and then I'm going to turn my camera down so you can see the transfer that I want to use. Okay, so this is a really big transfer. And let's see. So it is 18 by 18. And um, we're not going to be using the whole thing. You can't see the whole thing, I know. But uh, we're not going to be using the whole thing um, just because the board that I want to put it on um, won't put the whole thing on it, but I really just want it to focus on this beautiful rooster. Um, and so I don't know if you can see here, but I got the letters right here, rooster from my jar. I already fished them out so you don't have to um, sit there and watch me digging for that last letter that I can't find. And I've got some, uh, twine, uh, to string them on, um, and I just have some white paint that I had lying around the house left over from another project that I'm going to use on this board that I have. Let's see what size this board is. So this board is about 11 inches by 12 inches. So 11 by 12, um, I'm gonna put the longer length this away um, so that I can capture more of the rooster. Um, and uh, I already painted one side white so that it could go ahead and dry. 
So now we're going to get started painting the edges and the back side. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. I do have my um, sanding block handy because I thought um, I might want to rough up the edges or something to make it um, look a little bit distressed. So let's move these beads and things out of the way and get started here. All right. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is um, paint the board. And it is just a white paint, uh, bare paint that I purchased from uh, Home Depot. And it is an eggshell finish. It's an interior paint. And real quick, I'm going to share this video on over to my free crafting club. If you have not already joined my free crafting club, I would love, love, love for you to do that. Um, it's where I like to share all the projects that I'm working on, and I love for you guys to share with me what you're working on as well. It's a great place to share um, ideas, inspiration, and even look for help. You don't want to just sit there and look at the can of paint, do you? So, um, if you are interested in joining and you have not already done so, just leave me a comment, hashtag club, hashtag C-L-U-B, and I will get you the link so that you can get in there as quickly and easily as possible. And so I'm on my computer right now. I am just looking for this live video so that I can share it. Here it is. Okay. Bye crafting club if you have not already joined my free and so I'm on my okay silence that my computer right now I am just looking for this live video so that I can share it all right so I'm going to share the name of my free crafting club is the hen house crafting club so let me search for that real quick and it is a group on Facebook. Hen House Crafting Club, here we go. Okay, so now I've got that shared over there so that all my Hen House crafters um, can follow along with us. And um, another great thing about doing it live on Facebook is that um, even if you are not available to sit and watch it with me live right now, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you can always go back, <coughs> excuse me, you can always go back and watch the replay. <coughs> Sorry about that. I got myself all choked up. So I am just opening my can of paint. So that um, we can get started doing some painting here. Um, <clears throat> it is already mixed up. I already did that um, prior to starting this live video. So I don't need to mix it. Alrighty. So I'm going to turn this down so that again you can see what I'm working on. And I'm sure you guys all know how to paint. But... I figured I'd show you guys how I'm doing it. So I am just putting a thin layer of white paint on here. It does not have to be perfect. See how you have this little knot and these little imperfections and the paint doesn't want to get down in there. That is totally fine because I want this to look distressed anyway. And by putting um, a light coating of paint on here, it will also dry faster. So that will help speed up the process for this live video because nobody wants to sit here all day and watch paint dry. So I'm already preparing some projects for next week and I'm thinking that we need to get started on some Valentine's Day projects. So I've got some things in mind. 
Let me know what you guys are planning or have you started planning for Valentine's Day? What kind of things you're wanting to do? Um, I have some things in mind for um, decorating for Valentine's Day, um, for um, little small Valentine gifts, um, gifts that would be great for um, your kids, your spouses, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your um, your kids, your teacher, your kids' teachers, um, and you know just some home decor and decoration. So um, we're going to be doing that next week. So be sure not to miss out on that. And the perfect way to do that is by making sure that you're in my club. Because Facebook really um, likes uh, groups, their Facebook groups. And so they have this algorithm that um, will show you more frequently posts from groups that you're a part of than they will from businesses. So if you caught me on my business page, that's great and I'm super happy about that but chances are you're not gonna catch me every time on my business page. So if you wanna make sure that you're not missing out, you can go to the group and join and Facebook will be so kind to show you more of those posts so that you don't miss out. Okay, so I think I got that part done. Now I just need to work on the edges. And the edges are, um, or at least two of the edges, the cut edges are sort of rough. And so um, when you do this, it just like feels like it's eating up your brush or my, my sponge brush actually. So what I like to do is just dab it like this to get it in there. It seems to be a little gentler on the brush and um, it gets a little more coverage too. But, like I said, we're not at all worried about covering every little speck. Make sure I don't have any runs. And we're going to flip it over to do this side. Now, this side is not a cut side, so it's a little bit smoother. So, it will glide on a little better. Little bit of a rough spot there. That's good. All right, we'll flip it again. Go back to another cut edge. So I'm going to go back to my dabbing method. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera a lot. I don't have any drips and we'll do the last edge okay there we go Alrighty, so now we need to get that to dry a bit. I'm going to drop my brush in some water and clean up my hands a little bit because I made a bit of a mess. It's a little bit harder trying to paint and show you guys what I'm doing versus just doing it on my own. Uh, but thankfully this is water based paint um, so it is washable washes right off of my hands and since I don't have a sink handy I'm just using a uh, disinfecting wipe that I had I keep them here at my desk for easy cleanup
All right. Okay, so I'm probably going to hit this with my hair dryer for just a few seconds um, to get that paint dry because I don't want to put my transfer on the paint and then pull up the paint on the back of my transfer. That wouldn't be good. It would uh, not be good for my transfer and it would not be good for the look of um, the paint finish. So, make sure I got all this paint off of my hands and my fingernails. All right, good to go. So, next step, we're gonna dry some paint. Put the lid on this paint can so I don't make a mess with it any more than I already have. All right, excuse the noise for a moment. going to use this side because it doesn't have as many rough spots so I think I like this side better. So that's what I'll do. All right so if you've never used um, Chalk Couture transfers before um, we are going to be using one today so now is your time to learn all about it. Wiping the paint off of my mat. Okay. There we go. All better. Okay. All right. So now that we have our board painted and dried. Hey, Courtney. Good to see you, sweetheart. You missed it. I was just telling everybody to a couple minutes ago how um, I didn't get to see you for Christmas and I was missing you. All right, so we've got this, oh darn, I dropped my transfer behind the desk. Wouldn't you know it when I'm alive. You guys are not going to believe this, but my transfer slipped behind my desk and now I can't reach it. <laughs> Maybe if I take my watch off, my arm will fit back there. There we go. A close call. When I went to pick it up, it slipped right back behind my desk. Goodness gracious. Please excuse the craziness going on here. <laughs> Courtney, your daddy is working in the hall closet for me right now, and I was just about to call him for help. That was a good idea, but 
I didn't have to. I was able to take my watch off and squeeze my arm back behind the desk. Just barely. Thankfully, this is a really large transfer and it was still standing up back there so I didn't have to reach too far down. All right, so I'm gently gonna peel this off the backer paper, being very careful to not let it fold over on itself because when the sticky sides of this transfer sticks to itself, it's a little bit tricky to get it off because it can be very sticky and um, usually what I have to do if that happens is um, run it under some warm water and just gently pull and pull and pull until I can get it off. Um, but sometimes um, it does get damaged, so we don't want that to happen. All right, so now I'm just going to try to line up my rooster on here and... We are not going to get the whole rooster, I know, but I want to get a good bit of him. And then I'm not going to do these words up here. I'm just going to do the rooster um, because I think right here is where I'm probably going to drape the little wooden um, letters that we looked at at the beginning of the video. And if you missed the beginning, the replay will be up shortly after um, the live video has ended. So you can certainly go back and watch from the beginning. Um, and you can even fast forward through my little craziness where I drop my transfer behind my desk. <laughs> okay. So I got quite a few colors out to work with because what I was thinking about doing is um, like a hot mess. Um, technique. If you've not ever seen that before, you will um, get to see it now. But, um, you know, if you've ever seen some of these chickens and stuff, they have a lot of different colors in their feathers. And I thought it would be fun to um, put a lot of these colors in here together. And um, that way the feathers, you know, maybe will look a little more real. If nothing else, they'll be a little more colorful. So these are some of the colors that we're going to use. Um, I think for, uh, this, I'm going to do just the red and, um, then for his feathers, I'm going to do the mixture of colors, I think is what I'm going to do. So let's get started on that. Okay. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with my multi-use tool. Um, it is excellent for um, stirring your paste. Um, this little edge right here is really good for getting along the edge, like up underneath the jar ledge. Um, but it's also excellent for working in small areas. Um, when you're trying not to get, you know, the red on this little area down here, you can use this um, to give you a little bit um, easier wiggle room um, for applying your chalk. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, remove the lid. So we're just going to stir this up. Make sure the pigment is mixed together and that we have a yogurt like consistency. I'm going to take some of this excess off because we're working with a little small area and we're not going to need very much at all. So, okay, load up a little bit on the end. And then I'm going to glide it over just this top area that I want to be red. This is going to be... Awesome. I can't wait to see what it looks like when we mix all those colors together. Okay. All right. So now let's start removing some of the excess on there. So, 
We've got the red on there. I'm going to gently lift it up. Oh, look at that. How cute is this going to be? Super duper cute. Okay. I think I'm going to try and dry that really quick just because it's got these fine little lines and I do not want my transfer to pull it back up. So now I'm going to just gently lay that back down. I'm not going to press it down into the chalk. Okay. And we're going to work on this one other red area down here. can't for the life of me remember what these things are called. If you can remember, you can certainly chime in and tell me. Because I know what they are, but I can't think of the names of them for nothing. So for now, we're just calling it these little red things. All right, so there's that little red area. Let's see how that one's looking. Cool. That looks good. Can't tell what it is yet, but you just like it. Just wait and see. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to do one other small area, and that's his beak. And I'm going to try to do it in the orange. I'm going to wash off my multi-use tool. It washes off with just water, but I had this um, disinfecting wipe handy that I was cleaning my hands off with, so I'm just going to wipe it off with that. All right. So let's get... This one is the papaya. The red that I was using is candy apple red. All right, and I'm just stirring. Getting it up under the edges. Might need a little squirt of water. This one's a little bit thick. Not to worry, water will fix that. If your chalk ever gets thick like that, you can just add a little spray of distilled water and that will Mix up nicely. And just stir until it gets smoother and um, a better consistency. I think we're in a good place here. So let me get some of this excess off and then we'll be ready to work on that itty bitty area. Whoops. Okay, I'm gonna need even less than that. That is a tiny, tiny little beak. Even my multi-use tool seems big for this. we go. Now we have a little beak. All right. The rest of it will not be as precise because we're going to be mixing these colors up all over the place. So let me make sure this area is laid back down that we're going to be working with. 
Okay, and I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few small squeegees out so that I can put a dab of each color and just spread it out over the, the whole feathered area. So let me mix this one up. So we're going to be using the Couture Teal. And oh yeah, this one is tight. We are also going to use some buttermilk. It's this one here. So I'm just stirring that one up. And if you've just now hopped on and missed the beginning of this video, don't worry. You can always go back and catch the replay. I will share that as soon as we're done with this live video. Okay, so for, for the hot mess technique, we're going to just scoop out some of each color and spread it around. Okay. All right, so there's some of the buttermilk yellow. Let's do some of the couture teal. Maybe a little bit over here. Okay, and let's do some of the red. And this one is Candy Apple Red. Okay, I think I got a little bit everywhere on that one, including on my hand. There we go. Last one is going to be this papaya orange. I want to spread some of this out in different areas because we want our rooster to be some beautiful colors. Okay, let's get a little bit up here by his head. All right, I think we got enough colors spread out all over the place. So one thing that I will not be doing is putting the excess back in the jar because they're going to be mixed. I don't want to put them back in the jar to contaminate the color that I already have in each jar. So I'm going to get a small squeegee. And I'm going to do kind of a, a back and forth motion to kind of get the colors all over the place. So, like, trying to avoid the lettering because I don't want to um, use the lettering. We're going to put something else up there. See why they call it the hot mess technique? Because right now it looks like a hot mess. But don't worry. We're going to have one cute little rooster when we're done. OK, 
Okay, making sure that the entire rooster area is covered, which I think it is. I'm gonna start removing the excess and I am just putting it on a paper towel. Okay, we're getting there. Are you seeing all the vibrant colors? So to remove the excess, all I have to do is stand up my squeegee more at a 90 degree angle and drag it across. You don't have to press hard. You're really just gliding it across, I guess, not necessarily dragging it. All right, we're almost done here. All right. Let's start lifting this up and cross our fingers. Well, sorry guys. There. All right, so let's see what this hot mess looks like. We wanna pull from one edge, trying not to distort or tear. Look at that. I think my favorite is that teal, the couture teal blended in there, I think is my favorite. Okay, so this is the hot mess technique. And I'm making a hot mess over here getting this transfer all stuck together. Okay, let me get this laid out flat because I don't wanna have a messed up transfer when I get finished with this live. Okay, and I'm gonna dip that rooster in some water so that the chalk doesn't dry in the um, transfer. All right, so what are you guys thinking so far? Do you think he looks crazy with all these colors or do you like it? Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is um, use the hair dryer to dry it a bit because I don't want to um, mess up our hot mess technique here trying to add our next piece here. So, please excuse the noise for a moment. Is wild he is a wild crazy hot mess rooster okay so the next thing that I wanted to do is to try to add some of these little wooden beads um, I spelled out the word rooster and I thought it would be cute to maybe like let it hang right here with the word on there um, and then I can just attach it on the back so that you can't see, uh, see the unfinished edge. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start 
threading these beads onto my twine. And again, I purchased these beads at uh, Michael's in the, um, the jewelry making section. And they were not on sale, but um, I love a sale and I love coupons. So I just went online to michaels.com and they always have a 40 or 50% off um, coupon off of a regular priced item to be purchased in the store. So what I do when I find something that I want that is not on sale, I'll go online and get that coupon for that item. Um, so that's what I did for these. Um, there, there was a 50% off coupon uh, yesterday when I was at Michael's and I used that on my, um, my bucket of beads. Um, so they weren't too terribly expensive. I want to say they were regular 10 bucks and I got them for five bucks, but there's a ton of beads in there and I'll be able to use them for many, 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 many projects to come. So I'm not going to be just using them on this one rooster project. Okay. Sorry. I was cleaning. I had some chalk up underneath my fingernail there. Okay. So we're just going to layer all these beads on here to spell out the word rooster. And I'm using twine. You could use some sort of a string or a leather or something like that. But look how cute that is. Is that not cute? All right, so now we gotta figure out how we're going to kind of let this dangle down here. So let me lift the board up. And I'll turn it this way so that you can see what it looks like. So I was thinking to kind of fill that white space there. We could do something like this. Hmm. Should I put like a, just a big, like a regular round wooden bead on each end? Would that look cute? Or do you like it better with just the letters? Let me see if I can grab my round beads. See which one you like better. So I have these. What do you think? Would it finish it off to add that on there? Let's see. We'll put one on this end and see what you think. Okay. Whoops. might be cute. Getting it straight across. But if I do that, it still leaves a big white space down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to take these off so that I can put this round bead over on this side. Try this. It's crafting, people. There is no right or wrong way to do this. So whatever you like. So do you like the round beads? Courtney likes it better straight across. Okay. 
I think I like the round beads on the ends. I think it adds a little something extra. Okay. All right, so we're going to go with Courtney's suggestion, and we're going to do it straight across. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around to the back and glue it back there. So I just want to make sure that it's up above the rooster and somewhat centered. Like that. Okay, let me get some glue out. I don't know why I didn't bring my hot glue gun, but I have this E6000 glue that will work perfectly fine. Um, it'll, it'll just take a little dab. So let's turn this over. We're going to add a dab right here. And then we need to cut this piece. Try to get it at about the same distance. And add another little dab. Oops, I pulled it loose. Pulled it a little too tight. need to give that a second to dry. This is what we have so far. I think that's looking pretty good. Turn it around so that you can see as well what we've got here. And I'm just holding the string in place while the glue dries a bit. How's that? Straight across looks good? I don't usually like so many colors, but um, I kind of like this hot mess rooster here. And I'm really loving the teal in his feathers. So, that, my friends, is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this crafting video and if you have friends that you think would enjoy it as well I would love for you to share it with them so today we made a hot mess rooster using chalk couture and then we added the wood beads at the top that say rooster as well and I had a lot of fun doing it I hope you had fun watching too and I hope you will catch me again next Sunday for um, some Valentine crafting because um, I've got all kinds of Valentine ideas floating around in my head. And um, I was going to do it today, but I'm still getting together um, some of my project materials. Um, I couldn't find some wood pieces at uh, Michael's yesterday that I was looking for. I went to Michael's and Hobby Lobby, actually, and couldn't find what I was looking for. So... Um, I have made a, uh, or have given my stepdad a sample of what I wanted, and so I'm getting him to um, work on that for me. So maybe by next weekend he'll have some made for me, some little wooden cutouts that I wanted. Um, so hopefully he will have, you know, a few of those ready for me, and we can work on that. If not, I do have some other Valentine ideas as well. Um, that we will definitely be working on. So I can't wait to share that with you. And I certainly, certainly hope that you will join me. Uh, let's see what's that thing. Perfect. Oh, perfect for Grandma and her rooster collection. Yeah, Grandma is a fan of roosters. Let's see if she, uh, she likes it. She's not on live right now, so we'll see what she thinks. If she likes it, she'll be trying to convince me to give it to her. <laughs> which I just might do. Who knows? Um, but anyway, so this is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you're not already in my free crafting group, I would love for you to be there. Just leave me a comment. Hashtag club. 
That's hashtag CLUB, and I will send you a link to get you in, in there lickety split because I don't want you to have any trouble trying to find me or trying to catch um, my latest videos and projects that I'm working on. So have a happy, happy Sunday, and don't forget when you're in the Hen House Crafting Club to please, please, please share what you're working on. I want to see your projects too. Any home decor, crafting, um, you know, t-shirts, whatever it is that you're working on, I want to see it. So share some pictures with me um, so that I can see what you guys are working on too. Thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful day.